This M1 MacBook Air has single-handedly carried me through these past four months, whether it be word processing, engineering coursework, this YouTube channel, pretty much everything, it has done it all. Seriously, ever since I bought this laptop, it has been the only thing I've used when I wanna get any work done, as long as it fits within the obscenely small 256 gigabyte base storage, which I'm hoping they upgrade by next year. So I'm gonna break this video down into multiple different categories of why I love this M1 MacBook so freaking much. And I'm gonna do that by using timestamps. So the timestamps are gonna be listed in the description and if you want another route of getting access to them you can go ahead and hover your mouse over the video and you'll see all the timestamps on the timeline also if you enjoyed this video if you enjoy this types of content please consider leaving the video a like and consider subscribing as it would greatly greatly benefit the channel all right enough talk let's jump into the first category which is battery life i'm gonna put this down now it's getting a little heavy all right this goes without saying but this laptop's battery life is the best battery life i have ever used in any device ever Seriously, I can go multiple days in a row with intensive usage with this device still chugging along and it doesn't even stop there. Now this isn't advertised, but for some reason when I plug this thing into charge, it charges so much faster than any other device I've ever used. Now it might be because I'm using a 90 watt RAV power charger, but besides that point, I've used that same charger for a bunch of other devices, this thing just seems to charge obscenely fast. Anyway, I don't know if you remember in the past, but I was really, really into my iPad Pro, and that's because it was just an overall amazing device to use for anything. And the one killer feature of the iPad Pro that made me want to keep on using it was the battery life. Now take the iPad's battery life and morph it into a full-blown laptop with a desktop operating system, and you get the M1 MacBook Air. I would literally go from like two days of battery life on my iPad to going back to my Windows laptop where I'd have like maybe six hours if I'm pushing it to this guy where I'm right back to like the two day battery life. It basically just comes down to freedom. I know that if I fully charge this thing the night before, I can take this thing anywhere and everywhere without needing to bring the charger with me. And that's that one little piece of information that made me wanna just keep on using this thing, not being constrained to a wall outlet or to a charger. All right, enough praise about the battery life let's move on to the next category, which is build quality. Now to put it bluntly, the build quality of the MacBook Air is great. Keep in mind, I may not be the best judge of this because up until this point, I've only had like really crappy plasticky Windows laptops. So I'm going from a plasticky build to an all metal build. I'm sure if you compare this to other really high quality Windows laptops, it would be a completely different ballgame. But in my experience with this laptop compared to my old ones, it is amazing. The screen is crisp and color accurate, at least as much as I'd need it to be. The speakers are loud and clear. So if I just want to kick back and watch some Netflix, I can do that without needing to pull and grab some headphones from a corner of my house. It's kind of crazy having good laptop speakers because up until this point, I've been dealing with like you know, just regular run-of-the-mill speakers that I never really loved, but they were just good enough. Now going to this guy where I don't even want to use headphones because the speakers are just so loud and so clear that it makes watching anything just beautiful. The keyboard, the trackpad, which by the way, the rumors are true, it is probably one of the best trackpads I've ever used. Just all around, it is just amazing. There is one gripe with the build quality that comes when you're paying that Apple premium, and that is upgradability or repairability in general. On a Windows laptop, at least with most of them, if something breaks, no problem. Grab a screwdriver, a Phillips, unscrew the back plate, take out whatever you need to, replace whatever you need to. It's pretty much self-explanatory. With the MacBook Air, and even with the main storage being soldered onto the motherboard now, it is pretty much impossible to repair anything for just a general person that wants to just fix up their laptop. Now, I know that the EU is having different laws change in regards to device repairability, and I know that Apple is one of the big targets for this, so I don't know if this is gonna come to the US as well. We'll see in the future, but for now, just know that repairability is pretty much a moot point. I hate to sound like an Apple fanboy though, but that Apple tax and that non-repairability is just what you need to pay to have a device that simply just works. And one of the cool features about having an all metal build is that cold to the touch feel that I know at least one of you out there knows what I'm talking about. Now I did throw a D brand skin on this because while I do love the cold to the touch feel, I don't love it in the mornings where my legs are just not ready for the super cold metal to just hit them. All right, moving on to the next topic, which is app support. Now, comparatively, there is one other device that really tried to make the ARM architecture happen, and that was the Surface Pro X. The device looked beautiful, it functioned beautifully, all the native apps worked really well, besides Windows 10, which still wasn't really ARM compatible. But the Surface Pro X's one major issue was app translation. Now, I'm not sure how Apple did this, honestly, but translating native x86 apps into ARM works flawlessly. If you like run a side-by-side -side comparison of Photoshop running on Surface Pro X's translation system and Apple's translation system, 
it is leagues of different. And compare that to the fact that Apple is now having a lot of people translate their apps onto ARM and compare that to the fact that Adobe never released native versions when the Surface Pro X was out. But now that the MacBook Air is out with the M1, Adobe has, I believe, released Photoshop, Lightroom, and I think there's a beta for the Premiere Pro M1 application. If you don't know those types of architecture stuff, this probably won't make any sense to you, but basically Apple's architecture needs to be recompiled for developers. Meaning that if you want a native version of your application to run on the new MacBooks with the ARM architecture, you have to manually update your app to make it support. It doesn't happen automatically unless you're using Rosetta 2. This is why I'm kind of surprised that developers are taking the time, the money, the resources to translate apps onto the MacBook because Rosetta 2 is still a thing. But anyway, we're only four months into the M1 ecosystem and there's already a huge ton of apps that are released for the M1. And there's a website that I believe it's called doesitarm.com. I'll put an overlay now and also post a link in the description that tells you every app that has been optimized or non-optimized for the MacBooks. Now this next category is performance and this depends heavily on what your current build is. But for my case, with my desktop, with my old Windows laptop, this thing outperforms all of them. Now, yeah, if you throw in a 3080, you throw in a 5900X, it's probably not gonna outperform that, but we're talking about reasonable upgrades here. For $1,000, having a screen, having a keyboard, having a trackpad, having a beautiful build all in one, it's really a pretty good price. Especially with the fact that optimizations are coming to the MacBook, making these applications run even better than their Windows counterparts. The Adobe Suite, for example, runs better and faster than every other device that I've used before. Encoding, transcoding, all these super technical stuff just run better. And that's not even including Apple's own stock apps like Final Cut Pro or Motion or Xcode for compiling code. And hopefully as the app support grows, as you go to that website, doesitarm.com and see if your app is supported on ARM, as it grows, everything should get better and just work way more cohesively with this whole new system. And keep in mind, the M1 is a first generation chip, meaning that if the rumors are true with the M1X, it is gonna be a league of difference compared to the previous M1. Now let's switch over to a category that has nothing to do with hardware, but it's just all about software. And that is the application of using FaceTime, iMessage, and AirDrop. I'm not kidding, these three I never thought I would even care about on my laptop or on my desktop, but now using them, I don't think I can go back to not having them. If there is a combination of three things that I use more on my MacBook than any other device, it is those. I just love the fact that when I'm working on my MacBook, I don't have to touch my phone, I don't have to touch anything. I could just work solely off of one device, text who I need to, call who I need to, FaceTime who I need to, just all works great. And if I ever need to transfer anything from my phone to my computer, it's all done just through AirDrop. It's so easy and so simple. Now I use AirDrop a lot for transferring files from my phone. And also when I'm recording B-roll for videos like these, I do AirDrop all those B-roll files onto my MacBook just to make it easier to just throw them in instead of having to email them and worry about email storage and being stuck to the cap. It's it's just overall so much easier. Extremely underrated feature in my opinion that I don't think a lot of people even think about when they're switching over to a MacBook. Now finally, this category is gonna be short, but to the point, and that is price. $1,000 is by no means a small amount of money, don't get me wrong, but comparatively to other really high-end Windows laptops and high-end desktops, maybe not the best comparison, let's stick to laptops. Compared to other high-end laptops, the MacBook is a deal. For the amount of performance that you're getting, the screen that you're getting, the keyboard, the whole build quality, everything together just makes that thousand dollar price tag seem even juicier. Now I was hoping that because Apple switched to their own chips and they're making the chips themselves that they could reduce the price hopefully down to like 900 or 800 like they did with the iPhone 12 this year. It didn't happen. Hopefully in the future as M1 becomes more established prices will drop. And that's it. That's pretty much all I wanted to touch on on price. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did please consider leaving the video a like and consider subscribing if you did enjoy and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.